I'm going to show you one of my favorite cakes. It's pretty much my go-to chocolate cake. It's not the first one I ever learned. I'll show you that someday. That's even simpler. But this is the first one I ever learned on my first professional job. And it's a bunt cake. And I think that's the reason I keep making it. There's no layering and frosting, just a little glaze. And this cake is chock full of amazing ingredients. I have two sticks of unsalted butter. And I like it that way because I like to control the salt in my baking. And one and a half cups of sugar. And now I'll just get it started. Just let it mix around. And if the butter's soft enough, it's going to very quickly get creamed together with the sugar. Now for the dry ingredients. Two and a half cups of flour, which I, you know, I'm a pinch here, pinch there kind of gal, but when it comes to baking, I try to stay, you know, pretty accurate. So that's two and a half cups. And I just, you know, scoop in and level off. That's the way I like to do it. All right, a half a cup of cocoa. Important that you get yummy, good cocoa. And I use it a lot, but you know, it's, Oh, this is this cocoa is really what's bringing so much of the chocolatiness into this cake. So you want to have good cocoa. A good, oops, oops. I'll clean that up later. Half cup of cocoa, right into the dry ingredients. One teaspoon of baking soda. Dig right in there and get it in. A teaspoon of salt. Remember, I have salt-free butter, so I've got a good amount of salt going in here, and. This, I think, makes this half a teaspoon of cinnamon. What's incredible about this is that you don't even taste the cinnamon. But when you taste the chocolate cake, it's just got this flavor that you can't put your finger on with all the chocolate. And I know it's the cinnamon that did that. Cinnamon and chocolate together, when you have the right balance, is a real awesome combo. Okay, you want this well mixed. All right, now I have a half a cup of chopped semi-sweet chocolate. You can buy a chocolate bar and do it, or you can get chocolate chunks, and this is optional. I don't always use nuts. Same thing, half a cup of walnuts. You could use pecans. Sometimes I don't use nuts at all. Depends on what this is for. If I'm going to a bake sale, I know kids are going to be there. I pretty much don't use the nuts. If I know my husband's eating this thing, I'm using the nuts, because he'll be like, where are the walnuts? So get this in here and just toss it a little bit around. Make sure that it's distributed and that is fine. Okay, this is, I can tell you, this is already creamed. Just a quick bring it down so you can beautiful pale color. And now I've got four eggs that I've already cracked and I'm just gonna dump them in one at a time. Just let it get a little mixed before the other one goes in. Maybe I'm gonna put it up a little bit. And then a good teaspoon of vanilla, important for this. Now the vanilla, the cinnamon, the chocolate, that's what's bringing together the flavors of this cake. Okay, it's gonna give it a crank for a minute. Before I start adding the other ingredients. Now, I have a cup of buttermilk and I have my dry ingredients. And this is really all about combining the two. So turn it down so we don't have a big mess on our hands when I put the first bit of dry ingredients on. Slows down a little bit, then the buttermilk, then the dry ingredients. I like to do it, you know, no specific way. Just make sure you get it all in there. You cannot be a standing mixer for this kind of baking. You want to, you know, if you love to bake, Get it for Christmas, go buy yourself one, look for a special in the newspaper. I really recommend that you get one. Last little bit. The rest of the dry, I'm just gonna pour in here. And a little bit of buttermilk, and that's the cake. You can start to hear with the chunks, and just whip it up really fast. And done, oh, it smells amazing. All right. Oh. Now, no one's in here at the moment, so I'm gonna save this for myself for later. Otherwise, the kids would be in here all over the place. I have a bunt cake. Now, this is a bunt cake pan. It is heaven on earth to make a cake in a bunt cake pan because it's a beautiful shape. I am getting this into a 325 degree oven. It, it really depends on your oven, but about 55 to 60 minutes. That's kind of strange. It cooks very low for a long time, but you don't want to overcook it. 
See how amazing a Bundt cake is? With so little work, you have a beautiful, fancy-looking cake. And this one is so delicious on the inside. It's chocolatey, it's yummy, but I'm going to make a chocolate glaze because why not? I have some water boiling and a heat-proof bowl on top. And I have chopped here one cup of unsweetened chocolate. And do that. A half a cup of sugar. You just want to get this all in there so it can start melting. A third of a cup of butter. You might say, ooh, you're making a lot. When I make this, I like to have enough to glaze the cake and also for hot fudge sundaes another day or sometimes even to secretly put on toast or even dip my finger in if I'm having a chocolate fix need. And then two thirds of a cup of heavy cream. And this is entirely optional, but I like a little rum. I think rum and chocolate taste delicious together, so just a tablespoon or two. But if you wouldn't do that, then just don't do it. You will still have a delicious glaze. And you want to get this started. You just need to melt the chocolate and get the sugar dissolved. And that'll happen pretty quickly. The reason you don't do it right in a pan is because the chocolate can seize and be kind of gritty if you're not careful. So I'm just going to let this move ahead and melt on its own. I'm just going to take a second and glaze this beautiful chocolate cake. So carefully lift this over. And remember, we have boiling water under here. So I just want to make sure that I give it a little stir. Now, the thing about the glaze is that as it cools, it gets thicker. So if you want a thicker glaze, you can just wait a while. I usually can't wait. So I just go, put it on a, on a rack here and then start glazing which means I'm drizzling, really. And this is another thing I love, no fancy icings on this one. And you let it get in all those crevices. I am not shy about letting it really, really pour in and out here. Because what I'll do is I'll just scrape all that chocolate off the bottom and get it back in the bowl. All right, I mean, that's a thing of beauty.